What are we doing? How's my hair? Repel rings. Let's test these today. We've been collecting these for God, six months. We have aluminum, titanium, and stainless. They're a little bit different for each one. We've got several different brands. And the most interesting one is this rolled aluminum repel ring. And if you've ever repelled on rolled aluminum, you're, and it's they're pretty light, you're like, eh, is that gonna hold you? Sometimes you'll see three or four of them stacked on webbing that goes around a tree just because I don't think very many people trust them. I know I haven't in the past and I'm gonna find out what good ones break at. And then we're gonna find out what this worn down one on a popular route in Yosemite, that's gonna be the, the special bang at the end. Yep. Micro fractures. Why do they look so like beat up? Maybe I got them off a of route, so I don't know. Let's start with the rolled aluminum ones. Bobby, we should have plexiglass on the machine. Wouldn't get all this cool footage if we did. Well, that is shocking. <laughs> I bet you're curious how strong this is though. And I'm gonna be that guy and make you wait until the end of the video. We'll break that last. <laughs> <laughs> Here are some DMM rings that are rated for 23 kilonewtons, and I pulled them off of an arborist harness off the sides. They're a little bit more flat, and they are either CNC machined or forged. This hit my shield. I'm glad I, glad I have that. Yeah, that didn't bend at all. It was all and then nothing. Yeah, doesn't really look deformed. This broke at this. So now let's test these GM hot forged aluminum rings, rated for 25 kilonewtons. It's not as clean of a break as you can see, it's got more of a jagged thing. It definitely broke way higher than its MBS, so that's good. Wow, this one's actually less round than the other ones. So these next rings are pretty flat from CMC Rescue. They're rated for 5,000 pounds and they are machined out of flat stock. Whoa. So this is the most in danger that I've, I've felt. I stand behind this, but after stuff breaks, I, I stand up and there was enough lag time in the bounce that it came right here <laughs> and it hit in this box. It bounced off the wall. Oh, that's a low result. I don't know what 5,000 pounds is off my uh, top of my head, but. But it's not 21.82. So we're at 4,905. Not in BS, you're in <laughs> danger. Uh, rated for 5,000 pounds though. Whatever, super close enough. That broke lower. That makes it really awkward to make a video and put it on the internet. But I'll do it anyways. Shall we break the titanium? This titanium ring is from our friend Martin at Titan Climbing. That's at 6.5. That's at 10. I'm gonna move now. You think it's strong enough, Bobby, to use? Uh, yes. So Martin says that at 60% wear, it meets the 25 kilonewton standard. It's shocking just how much heat is generated from, I don't know, putting on 20,000 pounds of force. Unlike all the ratings and markings here on Martin's titanium ring, I got titanium from the Krabi Bolting Fund in Thailand. And there are no markings on these but they are trying to be good stewards of the money they do have because they are trying to put uh, titanium bolts and replace bolts in that area and they need titanium. And we're gonna find out if these are super good enough or if they need to go replace all these now.
Um, you, you'll notice here that it broke right where you put the Sharpie. I think that really compromised the strength. The Sharpie weakened titanium. Find out, ouch, <laughs> shit. God damn, that's hot. So that, by the way, is 10, just for reference. What is that, an 80 to one safety ratio? That's 10 kilonewtons. You'll be happy to know that the Sharpie didn't compromise the sample. I moved it so it wouldn't break oh, there. Right. There you go. I'm not going to touch that for you. So this steel ring, it's stainless, I believe it's three or four, is from Fix Climbing. It is bar stock, 10 millimeter, I believe, and it is TIG welded. What's it rated for? 35 kilonewtons. All right, that's 32 kilonewtons is when it starts to bend. Touch it right there. Not too bad. No? Oh yeah, it's not nearly as hot as the titanium. We had to angle grind the dings off of this so it'd spin. Yeah. 32, it does that. Oh, I broke the weld. Super interesting. They both broke in the weld, though this one failed at over twice the strength that this one failed at. Uh, so very different weld quality. Oh um, no, I think we might've been pulling on the weld with that one. Uh, yeah, we were. But this one we were pulling against. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe it's just how we pulled it. I don't think so. Yeah. I, I think just the weld wasn't as good on this one. Um, but this is still 10 kilonewtons above what they rated it for. But we have a PLX we can try now. Can I just make a note here that this five millimeter soft shackle is what's holding these tests. That's just a fun fact. 30. It's funny people think we're watching this as it happens. We are around the corner, guys. You have already seen the results before we have. Broken the weld. Oh, wow. Oh, look at that, it's a belly button. The next ring is a forged steel. There's no welds on it. I think it's because it was holding it at the, wait. Damn it! It broke my last purple spin set. It was doubled up. I've always wanted to break one of these and I've never been brave enough. <laughs> this one definitely wins. We might have to angle grind that off. Oh, that's not good. I mean, it's not that big of a bend radius, but it wasn't on threads. Bonus test. We didn't even know it was gonna be in this video. <laughs> Okay. Maybe we should just put that on the museum just like it is. <laughs> it got up to 94 and held it there. Yeah. So and I, I, it, it definitely wins. It's all stretched out, but I'm not, I'm, I mean, it's still got a lot to go because like there's no tearing starting. I'm thinking maybe 110, 120 on that one. Yeah. Who are you top roping with these? This is overkill. Now that we're done breaking the strongest ring we have, let's break the weakest one we have. I didn't know aluminum, rolled aluminum rings can look like this. Oh my God, I'm oh, glad man. I turned on the load cell. <laughs> that legitimately could kill someone. I mean, if you simul repelled on that, you'd easily generate that force just sitting on it, let alone bouncing or moving from side to side. Yeah. Yeah, terrifying. But what a difference between these two rings. With these rolled aluminum thing, um, rings it does not take that long for this to happen yeah yeah it would take a lot a lot of wrapping for that to happen on the on the steel yeah, yeah. for it to show anywhere so the milled aluminum rings didn't stretch at all <laughs> now, i don't think you should just grab your favorite ring from this video and stick it on any anchor for example if you're in krabi thailand and there's a titanium anchor there's probably a reason you should probably put a titanium ring on there Titanium is there because of the corrosion that happens between the type of rock and the ocean environment that it's in. And this is a titanium bolt from Martin.
But if corrosion is not a huge concern, steel does wear better, as you can see in the bolting Bible. My opinion is use stainless when you can. Um, there are instances where you have wear parts that will wear very fast, say mussy hooks, uh, that if you have a quick link and it's easy to remove and replace, I think it's okay to use non-stainless. Um, in this case, this wore out much faster than it was able to corrode. This was desert environment, but still, it doesn't no wear, corrosion. It doesn't wear out fast. It yeah. wears out faster than it corrodes. The whole yeah. reason of having a mussy hook or an open rope system where you can just clip your rope in, you don't have to untie and thread your rope through like a fixed ring at the anchor. This yeah. is really nice. Yeah, but if this, it, it's a popular route, right? Yeah, this probably saw hundreds, if not thousands, of top ropes in a sense on that. So if these are being used, they're going to be used on popular routes, and therefore they're going to wear out before they rust. But then, like, you see chains all the time, and they rust. This is one that we pulled off of Sugarloaf here in Northern California. Uh, this rusted, and it was staining where it was. Not only was it, like, leaving a brown rust stain the as the, the coating leached off the zinc it was killing everything on the rock that was there all the lichen and um, living stuff if people are going to trust their life to it it's nice not to be connecting your rope to something that looks rusty and it's nice not to have i don't know brown stains any yeah. anywhere it, it's it's ugly and it's more impact than we need to make for i mean it's not that much how strong is it you ask well we're about to find out after we turn off this video and start the next episode so you'll have to subscribe for that. Now, if you're going to be top roping 90 students at a time in a class, make sure you have a 90 kilonewton repel ring. Otherwise, don't worry about it. It's super good enough and just click this. Unless it's SMT. So with this third ring, we'll do an interesting test I've been wanting to know. This is a web lock. You can put your webbing in one way and you can pull it this way and it'll lock it in place. But if you use a ring, it's called a line lock and it just holds it in place if you're not tensioning on that side, for example. You don't have sewn loop and you don't want to have a second web lock. But I've always used the big stainless steel rings because, well, rolled aluminum doesn't seem that strong. You bite of webbing and you put in the ring once and then you do it again in that circle. And then in that hole right there, you can place your pin and place the pin into the, the hole that that creates. And it's locked in place. It's called a line lock for a reason. And now that is locked. I'll tension up my web lock. And now that is something we're going to test, and we're going to see, if we set this in correctly, if that ring is going to bend first, or if the webbing will break first. And on REI's website, somebody asked if you can use it for this purpose, and SMC themselves said you can. We're going to find out if that's true. That's uh, awfully diplomatic there, Ryan. Is that off-brand? It is a little off-brand. If... You're going to have high tensions in a park, which you have to, to have the slack line not touch the ground in the middle. And we're talking about a slack line longer than 20 feet long. That is like, you're never going to pull a three to one or whatever so tight you're going to hurt anything. But when you get into long lines, if you have aluminum in this system and you have carabiners, aluminum carabiners in the system, and they have that cyclic loading from the uh, wind from going vroom, 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 and that uh, is what will break uh, aluminum. And I'm the super good enough guy, and that's sketchy. Long lining is dangerous if your gear fails because the gear at the tree will literally, when the webbing snaps, hit the other tree. And if you're in the middle of it, it's happened. My feelings have been validated. Hold on, let me see the force. Okay, 12 kilonewtons is pretty high, but like it starts to deform around a force you can technically achieve if you're long lining. If you're gonna do slack lining ever, use steel. Use these to connect your web lock and use steel rings if you're gonna use a line lock. And if you do use a steel line lock, it is going to reduce your webbing more than if you have it in a web lock because the bend radius. But this is a repel ring video and I shouldn't get on that bandwagon. Plus soft shackles are better in every way. No, you can't do a line lock with soft shackles.